let's look at this awesome muscle here. This is called the deltoid muscle, or some people call this the shoulder muscle. It originates in a few different spots. One is the clavicle, okay, another is going to be the acromion. Remember, that's this little portion right here on the scapula. And the other part is the scapular spine. So the origin is going to be the clavicle, the acromion, and the spine of the scapula. Remember, my little, uh, my poor little skeleton doesn't have the clavicles on them. The insertion is actually going to be on the humerus. And there's a little bump here called the deltoid tuberosity. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos and you've watched my skeletal system videos, you'll recall that I have hinted at this before, okay? And I know it's kind of frustrating when you're going through the skeletal system and we're making you learn all these little bumps and grooves and things that stick out. Well, the reason why is because whenever you get to the muscular system, it all makes sense. So a few weeks ago, when we made you learn the deltoid tuberosity and you're thinking, what in the world? That makes no sense at all. Well, yay, now you get to benefit from the fruit of that hard labor. This deltoid tuberosity is the insertion point for the deltoid muscle. So let's think about this. If the insertion is going to pull on a body part toward the origin, what do you think the prime action or the prime movement of the deltoid is? And I will give you a hint. What is this called? I'm starting here and I'm going like that. What is that called? Starting here. Hopefully you are saying abduction, A, B, duction. The prime movement of the deltoid is to abduct at the shoulder joint, or another way of saying it is abduction of the arm. A couple of other things it does, and sometimes you'll see multiple actions. Um, and the reason being, like especially for the deltoid, is because there are multiple heads. There are actually three heads of the deltoid. So um, the deltoid actually also assists in flexion and medial rotation of the arm. And over here, okay, the posterior head will assist in extension and lateral rotation. But to start off, just make sure that you know that the deltoid's prime movement is to abduct at the shoulder. Now let's talk about the triceps brachii, which is this main muscle on the back side of your arm. Now, tri means three, and there are three heads to this muscle. Two of them, the medial and lateral heads, are going to originate on the humerus, just right around this area. And then the third head, which is called the long head, is going to attach to the scapula right here. We call this the infraglenoid tubercle. And all three of those heads are gonna come all the way down like so and insert onto the olecranon process or the elbow, as you can see right here. So let's talk about what action that performs. Now, because this is the insertion point and the origins are up here, when this muscle contracts, it is going to pull in this direction which means that the primary action of the triceps brachii is extension at the elbow, or another way to say that is extension of the forearm. Now let's look at the biceps brachii. Now, tell me, what does bi mean? Two. So whereas the triceps brachii had three heads, the biceps brachii is going to have two heads. It will have a long head and a short head. Now there are two origins to the biceps brachii. One of them is going to be right here on the coracoid process of the scapula. The other part is going to be on the supraglenoid tubercle, also on the scapula. Recall that in the triceps brachii that we just looked at, we were looking at the infra or lower glenoid tubercle. 
So that's where the biceps brachii originates. Now let's talk about the actions of the biceps brachii, which is number 25 on this model. Whenever this muscle contracts, remember, originates up here, inserts up here. So when this muscle shortens or contracts, what it's going to do is it is going to pull the forearm like so. And we call that flexion. Okay, recall that flexion is the decreasing angle between two articulating bones, okay? So here, we're going to flex at the elbow joint, or we call this flexion of the forearm. One other important action of the biceps brachii occurs when the elbow is flexed, like so. So, um, Right now, the palms are supinated. If I go like this, they are pronated. The memory trick I give my students is, is PPP. Pronation is palms posterior. So let me supinate them and remind you that the uh, origin is up here. The insertion is on this little bump, that little radial, radial tuberosity. So imagine that my palms are pronated. Now, what is going to happen when this muscle contracts? It's going to shorten. And when it shortens, it's going to pull that radius around like so in order to supinate our hand. So let's think about this shortening again. As it shortens, it is pulling that back. So another important action of the biceps brachii is supination of the hand. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please hit like and subscribe and don't miss the other videos I have within this series. Until then, see you next time.